run away while using them. So it's a very, very neat, neat product and they sold with over 100,000 on Kickstarter. But still, I mean, maybe for my previous like pre-startup ecosystem experience, asking for money is kind of a little bit embarrassing, you know, and you basically go very much public. And uh, as far as I understand crowdfunding, it's basically about going public and saying, hey, everybody, I need cash for this project. How did you start doing that in general? Why did you have the interest to, towards this field? Well, it was actually Joel George, who is our CEO, who started the entire, well, Nordic. And everything started from the fact that there are so freaking many awesome ideas in Finland in general for, for crowdfunding product ideas. Well, yes, there are public funds to get, but it doesn't very much help you to go international. With crowdfunding, you can actually do pre-sales for a product. So you, and it's for international purposes. So you can actually go international doing sales for a product plus do market testing at the same time. Do you even have, well, a market and where is it? Is it in the US or, or Europe or Asia or where is it? So it's, it's very, very neat in that way. So could you give us a few practical explanations how crowdfunding works let's say i have decided to commercialize tribecast for example how do i do the shout out well let's go if you have for example a game that's easier they games sell very 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 well on on kickstarter so if you have a game you have basically a playable demo and you only need the money to finish up the game or also if you have a physical uh, product whatever it is like in sports or something you have a working prototype which is completely finished then basically you have to have all the plans ready how to actually launch you have to have the manufacturing plans logistics plans marketing plans and so on and when you have enough followers on social media then you can basically launch on kickstarter and start selling and that's that's the way it goes that usually we recommend of preparing for a campaign at least for three months which sounds like a long time, but then again, sales in general takes a long time, usually, for preparation for those. So basically, within in your experience, within three months, I can get from zero to how much? Million? Yeah, it, it depends on the product and how well you do actually the marketing. Of course, it depends on the budget, and that's the main thing is actually like how much are you willing to put into marketing and that's the same with with like with whatever sales if you don't put money into marketing you won't sell so if you have the courage enough to do so and you have planned it correctly so you know where the keywords are for social media marketing and so on and most likely you have a marketing agency to aid you as well then yeah, it, the sky is basically the limit. That you, for example, with games, you can't reach a million. With, for example, some, yeah, some consumer products, we can easily talk about hundreds of thousands. But once again, it totally depends on the product. Sometimes to get ten thousand is enough for your product, and then you should go for that. Okay, and what would you name as the main mistakes for a? startup which starts on the path of crowdfunding Mm, if let's say if a campaign is unsuccessful which means that the campaign does not reach its money goal within certain days most likely they have done problems with marketing they have not find uh, found the right audience for the product also the video extremely extremely important that the video is good. And also what can be wrong is is the money, the price of the product that you're selling. Sometimes it, they are just asking too much money, easy as that. And with, with whatever sales, if you're asking too much, you won't sell. Well, one thing that might go wrong is as well that the product is out too early, which basically means that it's so futuristic that it's the wrong timing of going out with it. Or perhaps you don't even have a market, but then you know that there is no point of starting manufacturing 
something that's not well going to sell anyways. Because on Kickstarter, the point is that you actually are selling a product for early birds. So those are the people who want to be earlier than anyone else out there with well, getting a new product. And if they don't buy, what is the likelihood of anyone else buying? True, true. But how do you balance that? How do you learn if the market is ready or not? Um, well, of course, you will start off with doing social media and check if you are getting enough audience there. And you can always send out a survey, ask if people are willing to start buying and with what price, and then go with that information. And if it happens to be that you are unsuccessful, then you can always analyze the situation, adjust, for example, the pricing or the goals, and launch again. Easy as that. And then you know if, if you're too early or too late with a product. Speaking of social media, which is your favorite one, marketing-wise? Personally, for me, it's LinkedIn at the moment. <laughs> but once again, if, if a campaign, if you're talking about it, it depends on the product. If you're talking about games, it might be Reddit nowadays, just because there are the gamers and the 20-something-year-old males. Uh, sometimes it's Instagram, especially if we are talking about clothing those kind of products. But most importantly nowadays, I think you need to have yourself a very good personal branding because in the end, your personal branding sells actually better than clothing brand. Basically, if you have a thousand people who are basically following you and helping you out is more than 10 people who are helping out a well product that they don't know about, basically. So don't forget about personal branding these days. It's very, very effective. Okay. That was a good advice. Could you please share with our listeners, because of course not all of them will be present uh, during your today's workshop. Could you please share a few other advice and could you please generally tell what your workshop today is about? Yeah, my workshop today is generally about what is crowdfunding and what is rewards-based crowdfunding, because those can mean separate things, actually. <laughs> Uh, there is equity crowdfunding, for example, which is the more famous in Finland, which is selling your shares. Then there is rewards-based crowdfunding, which is doing pre-sales, plus we have charity. So basically the word crowdfunding means that you can gather money for cancer treatments or selling shares for a Bitcoin company, which is quite crazy. Then we go forward into Kickstarter and why you should go there and why do people purchase from Kickstarter. And after that, through more like what is needed to actually succeed in one, like what sort of different plans do you need to have, like logistics plans and video script and so on, which are extremely, extremely important when going into Kickstarter. It's like you're putting together a puzzle. You might know your own product very well, but in the end, you need to have all the puzzles to actually make it work. Because without, for example, a manufacturing plan, you have an awesome product idea. You might have a prototype, but and you do a crowdfunding and you succeed in it. But there is no factory that could actually manufacture it. it yeah, it doesn't sound like it would be in the end very successful. So you need to get the right partners before going on, on Kickstarter and get all the plans ready so that you can actually walk around all the possible pitfalls. All right. Sounds like this is going to be an interesting workshop. Are you given any other coming workshops or lectures somewhere outside of Rauma? Um, well, yesterday I was actually in Turku. But next up, it looks like I will be talking with a school, probably. It looks like the different schools in Finland starts to be a little bit more interesting, like the different Merkonomi economic students and then it looks also that I'm going towards Tallinn in December so looking forward to that and hopefully I will get into the gaming scene in in Uvascula next year when the new gaming house opens up so I'm trying to get myself in there so please send me an invite all right 
maybe our partners and friends in Uvascula are listening to this episode. So, Hopefully. all right. <laughs> Thank you very much for this interview, Nora. That was fun. I wish you good luck with the workshop and let's probably let you go and prepare for it. Ah, oh, thank you. It will be so much fun being here today. And I'd like to remind our listeners that the interview from Joel from Nordit can be heard in the Turco episode of Tribecast Summer Tour. By the way, I would like to thank Harry Hallanen for the amazing posters for Tribecast Summer Tour. If you haven't seen them on our Twitter, please go and check. Those are just great. And this is actually all for this week. Oh, we do actually have some news for you. Let me announce for the first time ever that Tribecast has got the media accreditation for Slush. So see you there and don't miss the special Slush episode of Tribecast Tre. My name is Marina. This was Tribecast episode 39. I wish you all a nice weekend. Take care of yourself and stay warm and tuned. Drink us. Drink us.